Welcome back, guys. So, I forgot I had this on. You know, it looks a little more stylish than me just wearing my Kirby shirt, but I feel like... Welcome back, guys. So, a few weeks ago, a company named Kinhank that you might have heard of from other retro YouTubers, like retro emulation YouTubers, reached out to me and told me that they wanted to send me one of their products to review on this channel. And that product is this. I'm holding it right now. I'm aware that that's kind of a weird way to start off a video, but I wanted to start it off that way so that I could let you know that one, they did send me this product for free, which I'm very grateful for. And two, just because they sent it to me for free does not mean I'm going to give it a favorable review because I, th because they sent it to me for free. I'm going to go through all the critiques I have with it. I'm going to be reviewing it and judging it as if I bought it myself, which I mean, it's $12, so I probably could have but they did send this to me for free and I greatly appreciate it. But like I said, it's not gonna be affecting the review. All that to say, thank you Kinang for sending me this. I very much appreciate it, but I'm not gonna be sugarcoating my review just because they sent it to me for free. But if you do wanna send me free stuff in the future, free devices like to review and stuff, I will take those very happily. All right, let's get into the actual review. So according to this thing's AliExpress page, it's called the Kinhank Super Console 500G Gaming HDD and the rest on the page is just keywords, I assume. The G probably stands for gigabytes, because, I mean, that's how much storage is on here. It says... It says it somewhere. Actually, it doesn't. But it is 500 gigabytes of storage, and the HDD means hard drive. I'm pretty sure you all knew that. The AliExpress page for this device will be linked in the description down below, so if you ever want one, or you want to go get one, you want to go see the AliExpress page, see if your device works with it, see if you should get it, it'll be linked down below. And... Just go click it. Click it right now. Looking at the AliExpress page more extensively, there are a few things you're gonna have to take into account before ordering, like the aforementioned $12 price tag, which I will have to take into account when I bring up all my critiques because $12 is not that much money. It runs about Osera, which is a fork of Linux that's common on low-end emulation devices, but I do have to say, I think this is the nicest I've ever seen it on a any console of any sort. This, this really doesn't have anything to do with Kinhank, but it looks clean and runs really smooth on every device I tested. You'll see more of that in a second when I show footage of me testing it out on different laptops and stuff, but just know it's a good UI. There are also some restrictions on what devices this thing can be used on, and there's a list on the AliExpress page listing all of the devices that can be used, and notably, ARM-based devices aren't compatible, which means it won't work with my Microsoft Surface Pro, either of my Loki models, or any M1 or M2 MacBooks you may have. This is probably my biggest issue with this thing, because a lot of the devices I wanted to try it on, like my aforementioned Surface and Loki models, wouldn't support it. This is very much an isolated issue as ARM-based PCs only make up around 14% of the of the PC market right now. But if it's an issue I ran into, it's an issue someone else can run into. So I wanted to bring it up. I did eventually find laptops that this thing works with and it works well, but I wanted to bring it up in the beginning because it is an issue I ran into that like I said, if I ran into it, someone else can as well. Unboxing this thing is pretty straightforward. It comes in a small box with the hard drive on top, the cable in a small baggie, and a user manual that has instructions for how to boot off of it and put ROMs onto it, which is very useful. The cable isn't very long, which isn't really an issue considering most, if not all, of this thing's life will be spent plugged into a PC or laptop. This is a hard drive you boot off of on any PC you may have that is supported. And you do that by either going to the settings app on Windows or by going into the BIOS settings as you're booting up. This thing has a lot of systems and games on it. The more modern ones like Wii U and Switch have pretty limited libraries, but the game selection is massive. They advertise 110,000 or more games on the AliExpress listing, which I honestly don't doubt, but if I can make some suggestions, I'd recommend putting some more popular games into some of the console's libraries. What I'm specifically referring to is the Nintendo Switch library as the only game listed there is ARMS? Like for the Wii U, it may sense that the only game listed there is Mario Kart 8 because that was the most popular Wii U game. But for the Nintendo Switch, ARMS is nowhere near the most popular Nintendo Switch game. I don't know anybody that even remembers that game, let alone thinks it's their favorite Switch game. So I just think that's like, could use some better ROMs in the hard drive. I think when you're booting it up, preloading. But if you want to put your own ROMs on here, you can, and it's as easy as plugging it into your PC using the cable that they provided while it's running Windows and dragging and dropping the ROMs into their respective folders. Now, I did run into an issue where it wouldn't show up in File Explorer, like, at all, and I, 
I'm not sure why. So I had to go into disk management and assign it a letter. After that, it worked perfectly fine. I'm still not sure why it happened, but I can't really blame it on the device because I've had that issue with devices before, with drives before. But I thought I'd bring it up just in case someone has a similar issue and wanted like needed a solution. But yeah, being able to put your own ROMs on here very easily is a really big upside because like I said, the preloaded library doesn't have all the games I'd be looking for. So I'd like to add them on here. Like for example, it didn't have Pikmin one or two. So I put it on there myself, but the preloaded library is good enough. If you're more so focused on the retro retro games like NES and SNES, you'll be perfectly fine with this as it'll, it should have every game you're looking for. And if not, like I said, you just plug it into your PC and put the ROM on there. And it's very nice to know that that's a available option. So getting into testing this thing, the first device that I tried this thing on was my big desktop PC. And as I'm sure you can imagine, it ran everything really well. But that's not interesting. My big PC can run Switch games really well in Windows upscaled. That's not interesting to test out because it's already because you already know it's going to run well. I next tried it on my Microsoft service, but like the listing said would happen, it didn't work. Next, I spent about six minutes looking for a power cable for a certain laptop and I couldn't find it. So that was a bad option as well. I clearly struggled to find a good laptop to use it with to really test what it could do compared to Windows, but I found success in my old laptop. You know, the one I used to use for all my video editing and emulation back before I got my big PC. And that actually worked perfectly. Well, I mean, the screen is damaged and it took forever to boot up because it had to fix the internal storage which doesn't make it a fun device to actually use it with, but I finally had a low power device to use it with, and I consider that a win. The first game I tried it out with was Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and that worked really well. I did notice some slowdowns and stuttering, but I feel like that had more to do with the fact that the game had never been played before, rather than the laptop itself. It ran really well regardless, but I just thought I'd point that out. Next, I tried ARMS, and I wasn't really expecting it to work, but I did kind of want to try it out, and like I expected would happen, it didn't work. It didn't even load, which is fine. I didn't expect it to, like I've said three times now, but it was cool to try. I next tried Mario Kart Double Dash, which actually crashed on me the first time I tried it, but that was because I tried upscaling it to 1080p. And I'm not sure why I did that considering this device has a broken screen, but it was a fun attempt anyway. After setting the resolution to 2X or 720p, the game ran really well. There might have been slowdowns somewhere in there. I didn't notice any as I was playing the game and it ran at full speed pretty much the entire time. I didn't try out any other games on that laptop because when I told my dad about what I was testing out, he offered to bring me a laptop from his work so that I could test it out. And I was like, please do because I wanted a laptop to try it out on that didn't have a broken screen. The laptop he gave me has eight gigabytes of RAM and uses an X64 based processor, which if you remember from the AliExpress listing, that said that this would only work with X86 hardware. I'm no computer buff, so this could just be a wording thing that I'm not understanding, but I didn't think it would work considering it said x86 only, and now it's working on an x64 based laptop. If there are any computer buffs who are intelligent, please leave a comment because I am confused. But besides that, this thing uses an i5 Intel CPU and a Geekbench test I ran put the scores higher than the ones I got for my Surface Pro when I ran that last year. So this thing is probably pretty powerful. It's not the most powerful thing in the world, that's why I like to use low-end PCs, but I mean, it's fine to use. I'm not sure if I just had bad luck with this thing or what, but when I initially tried to boot this thing on there, it refused to work. It gave me an error that I learned was because the computer was in a safe boot mode and Kinhank actually provided me with a video showing me how to disable that. So thank you very much for that because I was very confused. I thought the laptop was bad and I wouldn't be able to use it, but it wasn't and I was able to use it. I didn't try many more games, but I did try Mario Kart 8 on Wii U and Arms on Switch, which both ran. Neither ran at full speed, but the fact that either ran at all is actually pretty cool. I tried running both Mario Wonder and Pikmin 4 after the fact, like a few days before this, uh, after I filmed most of my testings. But even though I upgraded the pre-installed keys for Yuzu and Ryu Jinx on this thing, neither would run well. I don't know if it was something to do with the ROMs or what, but Pikmin 4 crashed after the start screen, which is something that happens in Android 2, but 
I think it's interesting that it's happening on here as well. While Mario Wonder just refused to boot, which is honestly not the result I expected. I expected Mario Wonder to boot and Pikmin 4 to crash. I tried Super Smash Bros. Brawl again for some reason, which once again ran really well. I did try other games like Mario Kart Double Dash and Pikmin 1 and 2, which both ran really well, but I don't have any footage of those. But trust me, Mario Kart Double Dash runs well because it's, this is a more powerful PC than the one I had. That one runs well. And if arms can run at a pretty, like if it can run at something which I assume is around 40 frames per second, GameCube games are gonna run really well. What I think the best use case scenario would be for this hard drive is for some kind of mini PC or like the title of this video, an old laptop that you don't really wanna use anymore that you can turn into some like retro emulation station system thing. Like leave it plugged into a TV for long periods of time and set it so that it boots off of this via the BIOS or settings or whatever, default boots off of this. So whenever you turn it on, it just boots into emulation into Batocera so you can play it. Would I recommend this to y'all? Probably, but I mean, it depends on your use case. It's really hard to complain about something like this when it's only $12 and most of my complaints come down to just the devices that this works on, which I'm not even sure if they can control, and the ROM library that it comes with which you can just add your own ROMs. But I think the pre-installed library should be better. This is definitely used more for like retro retro emulation, like NES and SNES. So the Wii U and Switch libraries don't matter all that much, but it would be nice if they had more games at least preloaded on here or a different game, because I can promise you for Switch at least, no one thinks of ARMS when they're asked what Switch game they wanna play or even think of. If they think of a Switch game, they're going to think of Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Who thinks of ARMS? But yeah, I think this thing is really cool. I think being able to just boot off of a hard drive onto your PC or old PC and turn it into like a retro emulation station is really cool. And for the price, you really can't go wrong picking one up. You can always return it to AliExpress if you don't like it. And it's like, it's $12 and you're getting all of these ROMs, all of these systems, everything's set up for you. You plug in a Xbox controller, something like that, it's automatically mapped. It's great. So even though I've had my complaints about how what devices I can use it on and what games are pre-installed on it, I think this is a really good device overall. But what do you guys think? Is there a use case I didn't think of or do you actually need one right now? Go to the link in the description, it'll be there. Tell me in the comments below. I'll see you next week, or later this week, whenever. Goodbye.